Now the question is, on what possible grounds could God ever say to you, you are just, when in fact you are not just? Again, how can an unjust person be justified? Well, when we look at imputation, the concept of imputation is found frequently in the New Testament with the imagery like the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. How does he take away the sin of the world? How does the Lamb do it in the Old Testament? What's the symbolism? The priest puts his hands on the Lamb. Why? He's transferring symbolically the sins of the people to the animal that is to be sacrificed or to the scapegoat who's to go out into the wilderness and we'll look at that again later on. Jesus is said to bear our sins. He takes upon himself the sins of the world. The language there is a language of a quantitative act of transfer where the the weight of guilt that belongs here is taken from this man and given to somebody else. So that what happens is that God, in Christ, Christ willingly takes upon himself all of this. So that before God once the sin has been imputed to him, and again we'll talk more about what this means when we examine the curse motif in the New Testament, but now in the sight of God, God looks at Christ and what does he see? Justice? He sees a mass of sinfulness because the sin of now has been transferred to Jesus. This is elementary. I don't want to be insulting your intelligence, but this is, we've got to get this into our bloodstream. The sin is transferred or imputed to Jesus. Now, if that happened, and that's all that happened, the single transfer, the one-dimensional transaction, you would never be justified. If Jesus took all of my sins that I've ever committed on his back and took the punishment for me, that would not get me into the kingdom of God. All that would do would be keep me out of hell. I would still not be just. I would be innocent, if you will, but still not just in a positive sense. I have no righteousness of which to speak. And remember, it's not simply that the innocence that gets me into the kingdom of God, it's righteousness. Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you'll never get in to the kingdom of God. And so we can talk about, maybe I'm not guilty of anything, but I haven't done anything. I haven't merited anything that, were, that whereby uh, uh, justice would give a reward. So the point is that there is a double transfer. Not only is the sin of man imputed to Christ. But what happens to the righteousness of Christ? The sin is transferred to Jesus. The righteousness of Christ is transferred to us, to our account, so that in God's sight, This circle is now clean. So that God, when he declares me just, is not lying. Incidentally, Rome has trouble with this. Rome calls this concept, the Protestant concept, a legal fiction. And they recoil from it because they sense that in the Protestant view of imputation, that somehow this concept casts a shadow on the integrity of God because God is now declaring people just who are not just. The response of the reformers was, 
If the imputation were fictional, then when God declared us just, it would be a legal fiction. It would be a lie. And that would be a blemish on the character of God. But the point of the gospel is that the imputation is real. That God really laid my sins on Christ. And not only that, God really transferred the, the righteousness of Christ to me. And that there is a real union for those who are in Christ.